I'm going to read the epilogue. Um, first, I'm going to read the quote that I have for the epilogue. I wanted a perfect ending. Now I've learned the hard way that some poems don't rhyme and some stories don't have a clear beginning, middle, and end. Life is about not knowing, having the change, taking the moment, and making the best of it without knowing what's going to happen next. Delicious ambiguity, ambiguity with Gilda Radner. Lately, my husband, stepson, and I have gotten in, really gotten into mythology. In the course of this exploration, I began to see my own grief journey as a heroine's journey. This journey, according to Maureen Murdoch in The Heroine's Journey, begins with a separation from the feminine. This separation often leads women to value masculine values over those more associated with femininity. My own grief journey began with that separation from the feminine, both voluntary and, vo and involuntary, neither of which I was conscious of at the time. The voluntary separation began, began much earlier than my loss associated with motherhood, starting with my academic interests. Even though I had been, always been very creative, I was attracted to the more right-brained disciplines of philosophy in my undergraduate years and rhetoric and composition in graduate school. I was very treatment or, oriented. My main goal was to graduate and eventually get a tenured position. At the time, having a family seemed optional to me. My call to the feminine came when I had an unplanned pregnancy during the first year of my marriage. I was terrified that it would be an interruption of my plans. I was terrified that if I had a baby at that point, everything I had worked so hard for might not happen. The universe ended up, perhaps not causally, reflecting this rejection of the feminine. Then there was the involuntary separation of the feminine, beginning with my daughter's death and my struggles with secondary infertility. While I still had some aspect of the feminine present in my life by being a wife and stepmother, the physical, material reality was a firm rejection of the feminine. This is where the longing for the feminine began. Many of the contributors have also demonstrated a separation from the feminine. Sometimes it's the feeling of being unmothered. For others, it involves uncertainties about whether or not they're prepared to mother under certain conditions. Then there are the different types of obstacles to mothering or the redefinitions of mothering. The separation from the feminine can also manifest itself through the body, such, in, such as struggles with infertility, miscarriages, and problematic births. After the separation from the feminine, I had plunged into darkness. This descent into the underworld often occurs after loss, particularly a death. This stay isn't only triggered by death. Although we never really stop being a mother, our roles may change, feeling like a major loss. The heroine's journey also concludes with a move towards acceptance through the metaphor of rebirth. I'm just beginning to learn that acceptance means accepting the challenges posed by life, rather than trying to control situations. This is where I've started to see the light. At the end of the journey, the heroine uses her experiences to give a roadmap for others. Many of the pieces and artwork in the book breathe knowledge into me. This resuscitate, the resuscitating breath made the blows I describe in my piece, blow by blow, less frequent and intense. In my mind, this is where the heroine really begins living. She is no longer unbalanced and, and is connected to herself, others, and the world. In my own grief journey, I'm finding myself trying to embrace a different type of feminine than I've longed for before. Also, I'm trying to accept other opportunities to mother now, rather than only focusing on the ones I've lost. As an editor, I've had the opportunity to mother by, in a sense, birthing this book. I have nurturing relationships with my contributors, being mothered by them, sistered by them, and doing the same in return for many of them. And as I continue on with my parents' journey, I hope readers of this anthology will also have enjoyed going on it with many of the heroines and her heroes contained in this book. Although we never know what is around the cor corner, I hope this book helps us better appreciate where we've been.